Drei. Mm. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are now live. Can I remind members, please, to turn off uh, microphones and cameras unless you wish to speak? And members wishing to speak, can you please indicate in the chat box? And can I just check that we have uh, an objector for the first application at uh, Boardman Street, uh, Blackrod? Town Councillor Price, are you with us? I am indeed, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Kate Grimshaw, the applicant, are you with us? I am, yes. Thank you very much indeed. I will come to you very shortly when we've gone through the details on the agenda. So the first item is dec declarations of interest. If any members got a declaration of interest, would you please indicate in the chat box for the record? I have no indication of interest, so thank you for that. Item two on the agenda, urgent business. Nothing has been brought to my attention. And therefore, we go to item three, apologies for absence. Mrs. Yes, Rich. Chair. Yes, Chair, I've got apologies from Councillor Wilkinson and Councillor Newall is deputising. Thank you. For the benefit of the committee, can I make, uh, visitors, sorry, to the committee, can I make one or two introductions? Uh, my name is John Walsh, and I'm Chairman of the Planning Committee for this uh, municipal year. Councillor Ayub is the Vice Chairman. We also have Alex Allen, the Development Manager, Nicola Raby from the Legal Department, and Vicky Reed from Democratic Services. And to assist with planning applications, Helen Williams, the Planning Officer, is with us today, and she will deal with specific uh, points on, uh, and questions on applications. I will go into some detail on the process for each application shortly. Item four on the agenda, Minutes of the previous meeting. These have been circulated. Members happy that they're a correct record? Yes. Uh, Seconded. Thank you. I hear no dissent. Item five, therefore, we come to the reports of the director of place. The process for each application is that uh, officers will introduce the application with uh, broad details. I will then invite any ward councillor who is not a member of the planning committee, who has indicated a wish to speak, to speak for up to five minutes. After that, uh, the objector will be allowed to speak for three minutes and will be asked to take any questions from a member of the planning committee. Following that, the applicant will be given the same three minutes uh, to speak and again take questions from the committee. Following that, members of the planning committee will be able to ask officers any questions that remain before we open the matter up for debate. The first application uh, this afternoon, therefore, is at 13 Boardman Street, Blackrod. Uh, Mr. Allen, I believe that you're dealing with this one. You're muted at, at the moment. Uh. That's correct, Chair. Sorry, apologies. Uh, yeah, so just to introduce uh, the, the first item, councillors. Uh, the proposal is for seeking full plan and permission for the erection of one house uh, part, two storey part, single storey of a contemporary design, as you can see from the uh, site photos, or sorry, the, the uh, plans on within the report. Just to draw members' attention to um, and apologise um, for the uh, actual report itself, you, members will find that the it is slightly mixed up. The Bournemouth Street application is at the, is at the front of the application, um, whilst it, the photos which relate to the Bournemouth Street site are actually located, and the, and the plans are actually located on at the back of the report from page 48 onwards. Uh, just so you draw that to your attention. Thank you. OK, so members may, may recall that outline permission was granted by planning committee uh, for half of the site in effect, the site next adjoining number 13 Boardman Street. Subsequently, um, 
permission principle was granted for the erection of one house also on the western half of the site adjacent to which is accessed off Chapel Street. As, as I said, the proposal is for seeking full permission for the erection of one house, uh, partly two storey and the two, two storey elements would be located pretty much next to the gable of number 13 Boardman Street and project slightly beyond the existing rear elevation of that property. Um, as members will, will see from the plans, it is a, of a contemporary design, um, two storey in um, say clo closest to Boardman's number 13 and uh, a single storey element which uh, is closest to properties on Carlton Close. What, whilst I just draw, draw members to attention, whilst the executive summary does that does state that the proposal proposed dwelling does meet the required interface distances or, or guidelines uh, in the general De design principles SPD, it does in the main, just to clarify, it does in the main, but obviously members will have read the report and noted there are a number of um, relationships which are below or slightly below stand, uh, the guidelines. Uh, and on that note, I'd just like to draw members attention to paragraph 47, um, the relationship of the property with number 12 Chapel Street. In particular, the first sentence uh, within that paragraph, uh, which states the interface distance between the window and the side elevation of the ground floor of the proposed dwelling and the first floor window in the rear of 12 Chapel Street is approximately 14 metres. That distance is 12 metres rather than 14 metres. Uh, not, notwithstanding that, um, in the main, the interface guidelines are met in full. Uh, where, where they aren't, there are, there are there is specific mitigation in place in terms of the overall design, uh, boundary treatment. Um, what, are the, what are the main aspects to kind of reduce um, the impact of the proposal is to set the existing or the proposed dwelling uh, below existing ground levels to minimise the impact. And so a lot of the issue issues where there there is inter the interface um, below the guidelines is that because the dwelling is kept so low, uh, people have uh, vantage points above above the developments rather than um, being faced with a two storey blank gable or with windows in, uh, which is explained in the report. Uh, it's considered that the proposed to what developed dwelling contributes to good urban design. Um, whilst it is it is also notably different than uh, the surrounding uh, properties, uh, would note that there is the use of extensive use of uh, render in the in the area. There are flat roof elements, for example, the uh, on the opposite side of Boardman Street, a, a flat roof a garage, which is also prominent. Obviously, this this site has the advantage of. Uh, been slightly tucked away um, at, the, at, the, at the rear of both Chapel Street and Boardman Street, and it is considered to be of good urban design by officers. There have been no technical objections from councils, the council's highway engineers or any objection from other technical consultees. Councillor Wright has uh, re re referred the um, application to for committee determination and those reasons are out, uh, detailed at the back of the report on page 18 where he, where he provides various comments on uh, uh, the potential issues with it, with this development neighbor objections have been received which are outlined in the representation representation annex uh, officers recommend that the proposal is approved subject to the suggested conditions in addition to um, the conditions uh, as, a, as attached, I think it bear in mind the level differences between the proposed proposed house and the on site and those properties on Carlton Close. It would be beneficial for, if members were to go with officer's recommendation to put a levels condition on. Um, and one addition, one, sorry, one also addition that members won't have in front of them is the proposed boundary treatment between uh, the northern northern side of the site, uh, which faces Carlton Close, which is proposed a 1.6 metre high fence, which will, with the addition of a landscaping, um, retain the privacy of 
both the proposed house and those properties on Carlton Close. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Allen. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, I have no ward councillor listed to speak, and therefore we come to uh, an objector, and town councillor Price. And I remind you, you have got uh, three minutes to address the committee, and then I would ask you to take any questions from members of the uh, committee. So once you uh, start, we'll wait until you're able to uh, start, you then have got three minutes to address the meeting. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today on behalf of Blackrock Town Council, and thank you also for the way you're continuing to carry out your duties during this terrible pandemic. I speak in objection to this planning application for the following reasons, which were unanimously agreed by all Blackrock Town Councillors. It is our opinion that this application is totally unsuitable for the proposed area, as it is quite obviously out of character with the current street scene. The statement and photographs we recently submitted to all committee members highlight several points which we feel provide sufficient reason for refusal. For example, with regards to street scene, it is felt that this development, if approved, would actually stand out from, rather than fit in with, the current street scene, which would in fact be a contrary to Bolton Council's own design policy. We felt that to submit this statement to you would help due to the fact that you understandably could not make a site visit as we originally requested. Also, United Utilities state in their correspondence that a public sewer pipe runs through this site and they may not permit building over it and requested that the applicant and the planning discuss this matter further. Has this taken place? This is a major concern in that if in future access was to be required for repairs, etc., how would that be possible if there was a development denying access to this public sewer pipe? The distances between properties is also a great concern. The topography of this area is such that Boardman Street and Chapel Street are some 20 or so feet higher than Carlton Close to the rear. It is very questionable if the current measurements submitted take into account the main windows in Carlton Close, which is on a much lower level. During lockdown, for instance, a permitted development of a rear extension to 14 Carlton Close was completed, bringing that property four metres closer to the development. We wonder if this could have any effect on distances. In conclusion, it's felt that this application does not fit with the newly introduced Black Rod Neighbourhood Plan, which has been agreed by Bolton Council and is the first in the Bolton Borough. The main reason we state this is that the Neighbourhood Plan provides significant weight in planning decisions as stated in government planning guidance updated on April 7, 2020. This plan outlines Black Rod's development needs to be developments of four plus bedroom dwellings, not three bedroom, of which Black Rod shows an oversupply. The plan also outlines a number of design principles which include the following points. Developments should respect the character and appearance of the surrounding area, Recognise and reinforce the distinct local character in relation to height, scale, spacing, layout, orientation, local skyline and design and materials of these buildings. These and other aspects of the plan support our reasoning that this plan development is totally inappropriate and should therefore be rejected. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Price. Any members' uh, questions? Uh, Councillor Sanders, uh, question. Councillor Sanders? Yeah, sorry, Chair. I was just trying to make my screen a little bit bigger. Um, yes, yeah, so Councillor Price um, has just touched on the um, Black Rod neighbourhood plan. And if I, if I recall correctly, I think the um, Bolton Council voted for this in January to go to a referendum, but understandably COVID will have meant that that process has been paused um, at this moment in time. It might not be a question that Councillor Price um, can answer from the town council, but maybe an officer. What, um, what planning weight, sorry, can we apply to the um, Black Rod neighbourhood plan um, I think that will be interesting to know in this um, in this particular um, planning application. Thank you, Chair. Uh, 
Thank Can you, Councillor Sanders. Question, Chair? I think that's a, a, a question uh, for um, officers uh, rather than uh, the objector, uh, Councillor Sanders. It's a technical question, and we'll leave that for the further on the agenda when we come to question to officers. Uh, Councillor Wright, you had a question. Thank you, Chair. This is to Councillor uh, Councillor Price. Uh, is Black Road Council against any developments of this type being built in Black Road Village? Just a quick question. Thank you. Of course not. Uh, Black Road Council, Town Council uh, are not against development in Black Road per se. Um, this particular development, whilst a very attractive uh, design, uh, we feel is in the totally in the wrong uh, location. Um, it's to be proposed to be built next to uh, stone cottages dating back to 1860 and conventional houses to the other side of the plot. Also overlooking, again, conventional semi-detached houses. So, no, we're not against development in Blackrod whatsoever, but we are against inappropriate development that will spoil and affect the street scene of certain parts of Black Rod. And thank you, Councillor Peel. Question? Thanks, uh, Chair, and to um, um, Town Councillor um, Wright, um, um, sorry, Price. Uh, you're obviously aware that there's um, existing outline permission on the land. So can I presume from that you are not against uh, this piece of land having um, a house or houses on this site? It, it's just a particular issue that you have with um, its orientation, size and scale, etc. Yes, um, we, we wouldn't have objections to um, similar type development on that land to the surrounding area. I, for instance, if someone wanted to build a stone property um, of single height, which would not impact on Carlton Close, then no, we wouldn't have an objection to that. Um, we just feel that the current design, whilst very attractive, um, doesn't fit in with the current surroundings, and therefore we couldn't support it. We, we don't wish to object um, just purely to object, but we, we, we do seriously consider that this to be inappropriate in the place it's being recommended. Thank you, Chancellor Price. Those are all the questions, so thank you for your attendance. If you wish to stay and listen to the rest of the debate, you're all welcome to do so. Can I now invite therefore Kate Grimshaw, who is a supporter? Good afternoon. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, to Can the I remind you you've got You've got three minutes to address the meeting, sorry, and then please take any questions from members. Sorry, Thanks. yes, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Planning Committee, for providing me with the opportunity to speak in favour of this proposal. As you will be aware, there are extant approvals for two dwellings on this application site. So in this regard, the principle of residential development is already established. Reserve matters and technical details applications could be submitted for two separate dwellings. This application on the combined site, site, however, is for one new property rather than the two. Whilst it is accepted that the design of the proposal is contemporary, it is considered to represent good urban design as required by the NPPF. The planning officer has concluded, given the variety of house types in the immediate area, that the dwelling will be compatible with the surrounding properties in terms of scale, massing, grain, form and architecture and that the proposal accords with policies CG3 and OA1 of the core strategy. With particular regard to the height of the proposed property, the condition on the previous outline permission restricting the height of any new property on the Boardman Street site to a maximum of five metres has been adhered to. In fact, the maximum height will be 3.8 metres and setting this in context, the neighbouring property at 13 Boardman Street measures 7.5 metres to the ridge. The scheme has been carefully designed and will be set into the ground, so in essence the highest part is only one and a half storeys. 
After thorough analysis, the planning officer has concluded that in the main, the council's interface distances, taking into account changes in ground levels and other mitigations, will be satisfied and that there will be no issues of overlooking or loss of privacy. The proposal therefore accords with policy CG4 and the general design principles SBD. The council's highway engineers have concluded that the scheme incorporates adequate access from the public highway and sufficient parking and turning provision within the site and as such they haven't raised an objection and the proposal accords with policy P5. Neither United Utilities or the council's drainage officers have raised an objection to the proposal and no objections have been raised by any of the other statutory technical consultees. For all these reasons, it is evident that the proposal accords with national and local planning policy and on the basis that one property would be preferable than two on this site, the pro proposal should be approved in accordance with the planning officer's recommendation. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, I have, uh, sorry, yes, I have. But a question from Councillor Peel. Apologies, Chair, my questions for the officers. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you in that case. There are no questions. Uh, thank you uh, for your presentation. Thank we you. come then to questions for officers. And um, can I first of all ask uh, Mr. Allen, can you address the uh, point that was raised uh, by uh, Councillor Wright earlier about the status and weight to be given to the Black Rod neighbourhood plan? Thank you, Chair. Uh, yep, the say the referendum has been deferred due to the uh, current situ COVID situation. Uh, therefore, because the neighbourhood plan has progressed so far to this date, it has some weight. Um, it's obviously that the range of weights goes from no weight to full weight. Um, so it's kind of greater and obviously you go from no weight, limited weight, some weight to full weight, so it has some weight. So we're, we're nearly there. Once the um, plan is voted on and uh, potentially approved, then it would have the full weight uh, in, in planning the decision making. Um, but I'd just like to say obviously that the plan, the neighbour plan is consistent with uh, Bottom's core strategy in terms of um, your know, design, character, and, and housing need as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Allen. And can I just ask a question from a point raised by Black Rod uh, Town Council in written submission? Uh, they refer to a sewer across the site. Presumably, that is a matter, of, uh, a civil matter that would need to be addressed between United Utilities and uh, the uh, developer. Can you uh, just clarify that point, Mr. Allen, please? Uh, that's correct. It is a civil matter between the two parties. Thank you. Councillor Peel, question to officers. <laughs> Thanks, Chair. The, um, as well, there's, there's, there's two um, separate outline planning permissions on the site. One at the eastern, um, described as the eastern part of the site, and the other described as the, at the western um, uh, part of the site. Since we have no uh, diagram showing um, exactly where the demarcation line is between those two sites, I mean they possibly could even overlap, but d does that actually establish a precedent as such um, that there could be two houses built on this site if there are two separate outline permissions on either end of the site? Yes, I mean, that's correct, Councillor. Yeah, there, there could be. So there could be one because obviously the, the, the application at members, the outline outline consent was granted by members last year to on the eastern side. Uh, I think that was from recollection. That was all matter reserved or perhaps just access. Uh, so the the, de the detail of the siting um, was up, up for grabs, as it were. I think the only restrictions that members put on were that it should be single story and no more than five metres in height, as explained in the report. Um, yeah, so there, could, so there could in effect be two two houses built there uh, on the whole site, subject to meeting a meeting with the 
our officer recommendation for approval. Uh, just for clarification, uh, on page four of the bundle, uh, which is the uh, area plan, there appears to be a red line drawn between the two sites. Is that the split, uh, Ms. Brown? I'd have to double check, but uh, I can double check whilst you. Um, but I should, yeah, the, the red the red lines do signify application boundaries, so I can uh, I can just double check if that's okay, and I'll put it Thank on the you. message board. Thank you very much. Okay, there are no further questions. Sorry, Councillor Darvesh, question for Mr. Allen. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, Alex, I was just wondering, paragraph 32 indicates that potentially um, 135, 139 Manchester Road, some stone built cottages could be listed. Uh, how far away are they from the application site? And also, is there potentially a conservation area uh, emerging here? So I bear, bear with me, councillors. I mean, what as, as you can see from page, the relationship between the application site and uh, the properties that you refer to, there, that's on can be the relationship can be seen on page four of the report. Uh, I mean, I don't have a obviously those properties are on the on the main road, uh, and th this site is um, obviously at the corner of Boardman Street. So, uh, you know, there, there are properties in between the two. So the relationship is, uh, I'd say the application site is peripheral to, to those and, and given the scale of the development, wouldn't have any um, impact on the, I suppose, the setting of those those two. Um, there, there isn't any, certainly from the council's perspective, there is no um, process in, in place to suggest that, um, a, a new conservation area to be designated uh, for those properties or, or for the area in, in general. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Matter is now open for debate. Councillor Wright, Ward Councillor, do you want to open the debate? Thank you, Chair. The proposed build is a modern style open plan detached dwelling at the end of a narrow street. It can be approached from two roads, Boardman Street and Chapel Street. The entrance from Boardman Street may not be suitable as the on-road parking space to an existing house blocks the entrance to the proposed dwelling. There is also the pavement outside number 13 Boardman Street that would further reduce vehicle access to the proposed dwelling. Chapel Street, which is one of the oldest and narrowest streets in Black Rod, is lined with Victorian terraced houses. Cars belonging to these houses already park in front, leaving the streets congested. The proposed dwelling intends to have a double gated driveway. Any vehicles driving in or out of this driveway could find difficulty in avoiding vehicles parked in front of 12 Chapel Street. At the back of the dwelling is a sheer drop onto Carlton Close, with numbers 14, 16 and 18 overlooked by the dwelling. Use of the rear patio area or rear garden of the dwelling would provide a direct view into the conservatory of numbers 12 and 18 Carlton Close. Both of these conservatories contain a dining table and are used as principal rooms. The materials intended to be used for the dwelling is not in keeping with the surrounding houses, which are brick and stone. The builder of the proposed dwelling intends to use a block cavity construction, timber cladding and silicone finish. This will be out of character with the Victorian houses next to it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Any other speakers? Councillor Peel. Thank you, 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I listened very carefully to Councillor Wright then, but I, forgive me, I couldn't understand um, what the point was he was making. He, he, he seemed to have read out a description of the uh, of, of the proposals rather than specific objections. Uh, the only thing I could glean from it is that he was speaking against the principle of, of House on that. And I think this is where the, um, the difficulty lies because <coughs> I appreciate that Chapel Street and Boardman Street that do have some architectural and historical significance. However, the, the wider area is must be described as mixed housing types. Um, so I don't think there's there's a particular argument that could that could be made that a specific type of housing needs to go on the site. We already know that there could be two houses built on, on this site. Um, it would be difficult to argue against any particular any dwelling at all on the site as outline <coughs> permissions already in place and i suppose the dangerous uh, thing is uh, if people are arguing about authentic looking um, traditional terrace properties then we need to be careful uh, what we wish for because just looking at the size of the of this of the overall site and in comparison with the size of the uh, all the houses on Chapel Street and Bowman Street, you could feasibly get a row uh, of terraced houses there. You could feasibly get three or four townhouses uh, on that site. And and I just think that what the applicant's proposing is, is pretty modest. We have on planning committee seen, um, you know, we've seen examples of developers cramming in as much as they possibly can on quite a restricted site. And, um, it, it's very refreshing that we're not seeing that now and because it's just uh, the one unit I think the issues of uh, congestion um, is it, it has to be described as quite negligible I appreciate Chapel Street uh, may well be congested but presumably you know the people who live at 13 need to travel up the the entire street to get there so you know that that's only the same problem that the new occupants at this place would have it's the same problem as number 13 have i i am for the life of me um trying to work out um what the what the what the principal objections are and forgive me but i can't really pick them up um other than an objection on principle to the site um i, I don't really uh, see much wrong with the application uh, there could have been arguments made about the style of the building uh, but I don't think the objector um, raised that as an issue. Um, so I'm quite happy uh, with the application, Chair. Were you moving it, Councillor Peel? Apologies, yes, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mistry. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the, the principle of having two houses and the site's been already established to build a house on there. We're now having seen that there's only one house going on there. No matter what the next person is going to do or the next application, the problems that have been pointed out are going to be there. I see no reason, and I can't really put my hand down to say what's wrong with this development, because this house is going to fit within the mixed development which is in, in the site and it's all, almost meets all the necessary uh, policies for developing building the house in that particular area and I'll, I'll, I'll second my colleague Nick Peel in moving approval. Thanks Chair. Thank you Councillor Mr. Councillor Dean. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, we've already granted uh, planning permission uh, outline for a number of houses. I think having one house here is a very sensible idea. Um, I've, I've listened to, I've read the report and I've, I can't come across any major issues 
as to why uh, we shouldn't give consent for this uh, house to be built. So I'll be supporting approval as well. I think it's a very sensible and modest application. Thank you, Councillor D. Councillor Sherrington. Thank you, Chair. Uh, one asked to ask how Carlton Close ever got built, because quite simply, uh, that the houses there were probably built in the 70s or uh, early 80s and uh, they are probably built uh, from a different style whatsoever from the cottages that are uh, in Boardman Street and Chapel Street and um, so I would have thought this situation would have arisen at that, at that stage as well. People don't like change and I realise that, but uh, if we don't have change, one has to ask, would we be happy living in terraced houses with outside toilets? No, we wouldn't. And quite simply, we have to move along. Uh, I don't see that there is anything wrong with this particular building, uh, except that it's probably uh, on the modern side, but then again, uh, sometimes these things are looked at as being uh, quite innovative and uh, are good for us to understand how things can be besides them being just uh, more um, sort of uh, uh, bungalows with uh, let's uh, stick some stuff in the, the attic type thing. So I, I have to, I have to actually I have to actually uh, say that I am a. I think it's a really, really good idea that they put this together rather than sticking two two more properties that just fit in with the properties that are already there. I think it is a good move, so I will be uh, voting in favour of this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sherrington. I have no further speakers listed. It has been proposed and seconded that the application be approved. Oh, Members you. therefore will be asked to vote for approval or against approval. Uh, Mrs Ridge, can we take the vote please? Yes, thank you, Chair. So, Councillor Ayub? For. Councillor Connor? <laughs> Is that four, Councillor Connor? Yes, four. Thank you. Thank Councillor you. Darvish? Four. Councillor Dean? Four. Councillor Howarth? Against. <laughs> Councillor Hayes? Four. Councillor Hornby? Four. Councillor Mystery? Four. Councillor Peel? Four. Councillor Radcliffe? Four. Councillor Sanders? Against. Councillor Sherrington? Four. Councillor Walsh? Four. Councillor Waters? Against. Councillor Newall? Four. Councillor Wright? Against. The application is approved. The application is approved. Thank you very much indeed. Chair, I'm just going to ring the supporter for the next application to join the meeting. Fine, thank you. Well, I await your return.
Chair, I'm just about to admit the um, supporter now. Uh, do we have Mark Harrison with us, please? Uh, yes. Thank you. Councillor Cunningham with us. Yes, Chair. Thank you. The next application, therefore, is for 58 Muncher Road, Kersley, demolition of the social club and erection of 24 self-contained flats with associated access and parking. Uh, Ms. Williams, I believe you are presenting this report. Uh, Helen, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you now. Thank Wait, you. Can you see me? We yes, don't see you. We've got the coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application was deferred at the 9th of July meeting. Uh, members requested that the applicant look to increase the size of the apartments, increase the size of the proposed outside amenity space and improve the building's relationship with 16 Holcombe Close. The applicant has redesigned the building by re reorientating the flats at the southwestern corner so that this part of the building is now 2.1 metres further away from the neighbouring house. This is considered to improve the building's relationship with number 16 Holcombe Close. Five of the two bedroom apartments are three square metres below the nationally described space standard. The applicant has not amended the size of the proposed apartments. They have instead reiterated that, the stand, that, this, that this standard is not mandatory, that they have built similar properties elsewhere in the borough and that it, is, that it would not be viable for them to increase the size of the apartments as this would result in fewer apartments being proposed within the scheme. Bolton at home has also confirmed that they require the number of apartments being proposed within the scheme and that there is a need for these smaller apartments. As the overall scale of the building has not been reduced, the outdoor amenity space has not been increased. The applicant is, however, proposing a contribution of £3,000 towards public open space in the Kersley area, which would help to improve facilities for both future residents of the proposed apartments and also existing local residents. Members are therefore recommended to delegate the decision to the to the director to secure the legal agreement for this open space contribution. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, we have a ward councillor to speak on the application. Uh, councillor Cunningham. Councillor Cunningham, you have five minutes to address the committee, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have to say I remain totally unconvinced by what I've heard. It's merely moving the building a few feet and it doesn't address the fundamental flaws in this application. It's akin to rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic in an effort to bulldoze through an application which could blight the lives of existing residents and businesses by cooping up human beings like battery hens. There is a worry in a worrying narrative in the officer's report that to the effect of Kersley's a stable community where the property doesn't change hands very often, as though this is somehow wrong or undesirable. It isn't. This is a benefit, not a detriment. Uh, and building a below standard social housing development like this would have severe and permanent ramifications to the detriment of the established community. As has already been established in the officer's report presented last time we considered the application, it clearly describes this application as a simplistic and uninspiring building which is below the national standards for both one bedroomed and two bedroom departments with no social amenity space internally or really or externally, meaning that residents are expected to go to the local park to stop themselves going stir crazy. This clearly won't happen during the winter months and adverse weather conditions we have in this country and we have more than our fair share of them. Existing residents have also described this more as a stalag and a blot on the landscape. Whilst not, whilst more social housing is undoubtedly needed in our borough, 
I worry when someone mentions the word social housing that it has the effect of a hypnotist snapping his fingers and members of the committee following a subconscious pattern of standing up and saluting the flag, regardless of its actual merits, suitability of location or otherwise. Surely the most important thing is to bid, build good quality social housing of at least the minimum standard or preferably in excess of the minimum standards to give any and all future tenants a decent standard of living and avoid the potential for social tensions, antisocial behaviour and abuse which often results from cramming human beings into substandard accommodation. There's plenty of anecdotal evidence to show that if you treat people like animals, they might behave like animals. Ultimately, standards are standards and they are to be adhered to or they are nothing at all. And no amount of creative wording can alter the facts that this proposal falls below national standards. And if it is allowed and things inevitably go wrong as a result, you can be sure it will come back to bite all those that actually had to uh, sit on the committee to push this through. Understandably, the owner of the social club wants to get the most money he can for the site, but it should be noted that the social club may still be bought if a developer decides not to plough ahead because he decides that he can't make enough profit by expanding the size of the apartments or reducing the number of apartments. I don't know if members are even aware, but an offer was made by three local businessmen who are long-time members of the social club and wanted to keep it as a going concern and invest money to bring it back to its former glory and full potential for the residents of Kersler. So it may not be the end of the road if this um, you know, if it's impossible to actually increase the size of apartments and improve the quality of this build, uh, it may not be the end of the road ultimately. And I would urge ultimately members to do what's right for the Kersler and what is a stable and established community and not take a chance on building below national standards. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cunningham. We now have uh, Mark Harrison, who is a supporter and Mr. Harrison, can I remind you, you have three minutes to address the committee and then to take any questions from members. Thank you. Sure. Uh, as outlined at July's planning committee meeting, the proposed development scheme for the Kersley Social Club site will provide 24 new one and two bed apartments. These will be high quality homes with high levels of insulation and low running costs. Financial support is provided by Homes England, though, by bringing valuable outside investment into the local area. Following the deferral of the application at the previous meeting, the design has been changed so that it is further away from 16 Holcombe Close. This has been achieved by reorientating the apartment in this area and it results in an additional 2.1 metres of separation between the two buildings. Consideration was given to reducing the overall number of apartments, however this made the scheme financially unviable. Concerns were also raised about the size of the apartments, particularly in relation to the nationally described space standards, uh, also known as NDSS. These, it must be stressed, are guideline standards issued by central government. They are designed to provide an indication of appropriate house sizes in a wide variety of situations and locations. The standards are only obligatory where they have been adopted by a local authority as policy. To date, these space standards have not been adopted by Bolton MBC. Therefore, they are not generally applied to new developments. However, in order to get funding from Homes England, it is necessary to achieve at least 85% of the areas quoted in the NDSS. For a one bed, two person apartment, this means a minimum of 42.5 square metres. The current proposals achieve 45.4 square metres, which is equivalent to 91% of the standard. Two bed, three person apartments must be a minimum of 51.58 square metres, whereas the current development delivers between 57.6 and 58.8 square metres. This is the equivalent of 94% and 96% of the standard. It can be seen that these sizes are well in excess of the 85% requirement that Homes England place upon housing associations. For comparison, the committee should also be aware that there is no requirement for private developers to meet this 85% standard. Thus, they will frequently build smaller properties which are sold on the open market for greater financial reward. Finally, in respect to this point, it should be noted the previous developments of this size have been approved by Bolton MBC in recent months. Concerns were also raised about the level of amenity space provided in the development. 
due to the previously mentioned financial constraints, it has not been possible to increase this level. However, it should also be noted that within a short walk from the site, a Kearsley Park, Kearsley Cricket Club, Clifton Marina, Manor Golf Club, Stone Clough, and a link to the Manchester Berry Bolton Canal. Furthermore, in response to concerns raised by councillors over the standard of some of the amenity spaces locally, the developers agreed to pay a financial contribution towards the improvement of local parks as part of the application. Finally, members queried the lettings policy that will be applied to the new Mr. development. Mr. Harris, if you've had your three minutes, could you sum up in one sentence, please? Uh, the, letting, the new flats will be uh, allocated to local people. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, uh, I've had no intimation of members uh, wishing to ask any questions. So thank you, Mr. Harrison. The matter is now open for debate. Sorry, I've got a question first of all. Uh, Councillor Howard to uh, officers. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's on that last point that was raised that we heard about uh, on the first hearing of this um, of this application. So I'm asking officers, um, this is now changed in the sense that uh, uh, the approval that we need to consider goes to uh, the director with the borough solicitor to um, uh, deal with um, legal matters and, and so on. Um, it's clear that uh, when the officer presenting, uh, she said that the thing there is the finance that uh, has been put forward. It's it's that £3,000 finance that, that really is the legal matter that they're working on. Could I ask, though, that um, this lettings policy, this or, or the business of trying to uh, be supportive of the people who want the housing in Kersley, um, there was an email that we heard about uh, from one of the senior officers of Bolton at home. Could that go into when they look at legal matters? This sounds more administrative. Could I just ask that the officers uh, somehow formalise that in some way administratively, along with doing that legal work? Because there, there is an email, there is something formal in writing from Bolton at home saying what they want to do, explaining why they wouldn't tie it down legally, because if there aren't people that apply for the properties, obviously it has to be open to everybody then to apply. But they had a strong intention there. I don't want to miss this opportunity to to say that uh, officers, when they do that, uh, the, the senior officers, when they do that legal uh, piece of work, they'd consider this additional as a formal administrative piece of work as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Howarth. Um, <laughs> Mrs Raby, do you want to take that one as to whether that is possible, please? Yes, Chair, that would be possible within um, within the terms of the Section 106 agreement. I have seen Bolton at home have um, said that, that that would be something that they would uh, look at. So yes, it is possible within the terms of the 106. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Raby. Uh, Councillor Darvesh, question. Thank you, Chair. Um, question is, um, I'm just wondering, um, in terms of uh, permitted development, I might, I might be coming off a bit of a tangent here, but permi permitted development rights on changing a dwelling into an HMO, national standards are not met are they because I'm, I'm sure they've not actually met so some of these um dwell, some of these individual flats are incredibly small that's why miss will you want to answer that one can you respond to that oh, mr allen oh, sorry i'd lost connection <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that, Chair. I lost connection, so I've had to change rooms. <laughs> so, right. so, so Helen. The question again, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, Helen, uh, I might be coming off a tangent here in terms of this application, but in terms of permit, permitted development rights from changing a dwelling into a HMO, national space standards are sort of disregarded, are they? Yeah, we, we can't look at. Um, if, if something's per, uh, permitted development and doesn't require planning permission, then we're unable to um, stipulate how large rooms are. It's only through the pro-notification or planning application stage that we'd be able to, to have any influence over that. Right, thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much. Those behold the questions, we come then to debate. Uh, Councillor Sanders. Thank you, Chair. Um, just see if I can get my camera to work. Um, yeah, so firstly, um, I think it's always um, sensible to acknowledge um, that applicants, uh, applications sorry, can be very emotive for local residents, and this is um, fully respected by um, committee. Um, as planning committee, we do um, have to concentrate on material planning considerations. Um, so therefore, local house prices, personal perceptions, previous offers to take over a site, covenants on land or wanting something else to be built in its place are not considerations that we can take into account against an application in front of us. And I think it's fair to, um, to always reiterate this. Um, I do think that committee's decision last month, I believe, uh, or beginning of this month, sorry, um, to um, defer the application was the correct decision um, at the time. Um, it has enabled the applicant to reconfigure the internal layouts of the three um, flats on top of each other and um, to the southeast corner, uh, meaning that the elevations and distances um, are now set further away from the bungalow at 16 um, Oldham Close. Um, if members were to, and I did this over the um, over the last couple of days, if you put your plans next to each other, you can see where um, that has actually um, been drawn out on the plans. Um, the suggestion raised in last committee debate um, that the applicant reduce the number of flats by about three to four was probably unrealistic, um, but I think it was worth a shot. I really do. Um, members of committee uh, may not be aware that um, in Moses Gate in Farnworth, there is approved construction of two of these three storey blocks of 24 flats, along with a further 14 dwellings, and that will be commencing shortly. Um, the plans and building designs in Farnworth, um, the Farnworth application, are almost exactly as these are proposed in uh, this Kersley application. Um, and um, in all honesty, they've been widely welcomed by local residents. Um, it's a former um, post-industrial site, brownfield site, um, derelict site, and um, again, I think people have seen the positives that can come from this type of development. And um, the only difference um, in this um, application, as I've just said, is that this is for one block of 24 flats and the farm application was for two blocks of these flats. Um, each application, of course, has to be measured off its own merits, but it is worth noting similar approved um, applications, I feel, in nearby uh, residential areas. Um, we, I think we've got to recognise that there is a massive need for this type of modern social housing in varied settings across um, horror. Um, the supporter did mention, and Councillor Alf has mentioned about the 80% local lettings policy that um, could be applied to this um, case if approved. I personally see this as a positive for the people of Kersley. Um, it possibly is a direction that we need to go when it comes to social housing in, in countless wards across the borough, maybe a more localised plan um, is something to look to. Um, traffic and potential car parking issues have rightly been raised, um, but again, as I've said on previous applications, a sustainable location of this site, um, access to foot, bike, bus and train, um, yes, not as close as you would want in some cases, but these will always be referenced to get around um, these issues in terms of planning. Um, in terms of the landscape plan, the exterior amenity space remains the same. Um, but on balance, I am minded to think that the um, the native shrubs, uh, the bull planting, ornamental beds um, could improve the quality of the space around the building. Um, it won't be to everyone's taste, but I think it's um, a step in the uh, the right direction. Um, three thousand pound um, to be made available if the application is approved isn't what could be considered mega money, um, but could be put to um, I believe could be put to good use by um, first of all councillors with interested residents. Um, to begin um, positive improvements in the um, the nearby um, Kersley Park. Um, so in terms of planning, um, taking everything on balance, um, which isn't always easy, um, I think the positive benefits of this application um, outweigh the potential negative impacts of a derelict site with a, a questionable future. So um, to conclude, I will um, tentatively move approval of the application to fulfil the legal requirements and of course as ever I await for the deliberations of um, my um, learned fellow members. Thank you very much Chair. Thank you Councillor Sanders. Councillor Newall. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, um, as colleagues may remember, uh, I moved deferment on this at, at the last meeting. And I'm very pleased that as a result of that, we've managed to get some extra space uh, to accommodate the residents of number 16 Holcomb. Uh, an extra 2.1 metre in space uh, is very welcome. Um, as has already been said, we have heard some emotive uh, input into this debate already. And this kind of thing is emotive and, and, and people do um, take ownership of developments like this, especially when something that's been there a long, long time is got, seen to be being removed. Um, but we as a committee have to deal with the reality of the situation and the reality um, of, of planning and material considerations. And this land is part of the allocation plan and it's been allocated for housing for a long, long time. Um, I'm sorry we couldn't get an, in, uh, an increase in internal space and I'm sorry we didn't get an increase in outside amenity area, but the uh, £3,000 is very welcome uh, to improve local amenities. I'm sure um, that will be used wisely. And uh, the local lettings plan, um, I, I don't see how you can ever promise 100% local letting. I, I, I don't see how that's viable. I, d I don't see how that's doable. And I do think, um, particularly in places like Kersley, that if you tried to apply 100% lettings in other wards, it would probably detrimentally affect a ward like Kersley in the future. But that's another argument. Uh, but I'm very pleased to see that the local letting uh, plan is being adopted. And um, again, I, I asked for this to be deferred because I hope we could improve it a lot more. Uh, we, we haven't improved it to the extent that I, I wanted it to be improved. Um, but I think we've gone a long way uh, to making this a better application. Uh, so uh, I will second uh, approval on this one, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Newell. Councillor Waters. Thank you, Chair. Um, as Councillor um, Newall said, um, there has been um, a change in terms of the uh, closeness to the um, to the other property, um, which is welcome. Um, which is, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that they have relooked at that. However, um, it's not gone far enough. It, for me, it's it's not far enough at all. And I know the uh, supporter has talked about, and Councillor Sanders talked about the fact that we've approved other applicate or other applications have been approved, where the uh, standard size is smaller. This is what I was very very clear on last time I spoke on this application. If we start accepting substandard sizing of properties, we are set, setting a precedent. Um, and there's, there's a reason we've got that in there. The, there's a reason that we say about the sizes and it's to make it livable, suitable and the right thing for the people that are going to live and reside in those apartments. Not only are those apartments smaller, there is a serious, serious lack of amenity space. And it's OK saying that the, the canal, there's access to the canal, the parks down the road, Moses Gates down the road. Can you just see people now going out with the washing lines and hanging them up in Kersley Park and all the smalls are hanging up there? Come on, people need somewhere to um, an outside space that is realistic <clears throat> and that they can um, have the time to enjoy, especially when they're living in somewhere that is substantially smaller than our own recommendations. Yes, I completely understand 
no problem whatsoever with the fact that that piece of land was put in the allocations plan. There's no issues with that, no issues at all. Um, no issues with building on it, but it has to be right. And it has, to, we've got to do the best for these residents. And if we start accepting something that is a lower standard um, and smaller, then, you know, what's going to happen next? At the moment, it's three metres. Next time, it's going to be five metres. But in future, all you're going to be able to do is get a TV in a room and a little a fold up chair or something. We can't. We just, I'm quite passionate about that. We we cannot let this carry on. It can't carry on. I support the develop, development on the area. I really, really do. But we've, they've not gone far enough. So I would like to move refusal. Thank you, Councillor Waters. Councillor Peel. Thanks, Chair. And um, I think there's I think there's been some really, really good uh, points made in, in this debate. I would say to Councillor Saunders, who rarely speaks on applications outside his own ward, uh, he should do it more because that was a very considered um, um, statement that he made there. Just before I get on to the gist of it, I, I think Councillor um, Newell raised a really, really interesting point there about lettings policy. I think a local lettings policy needs to be where the significant demand outstripping supply, not just based on, on a geographical location, what I want for my ward, because she's absolutely right. If we introduce the local lettings policy in a place like Tong, or a place like Breakmate or Halliwell, you would find that wards like Kersley um, where there are less social housing would lose out in the long run. So we just need to be careful what we uh, what we wish for in the future. In, in my view, I think I think Councillor Saunders and Councillor Waters uh, both hit the nail on the head. The, the principal argument here is about the size of the units. And I think um, I think uh, Councillor Waters uh, misses the point and I'll come back to that in a minute. Councillor Cunningham, when he was speaking, selectively quoted from the report a selective quote was that there's a low turnover uh, of stock in Kersley and he drew from that conclusion that it's a stable community but he didn't carry on reading from the report because the next sentence after the report says low turnover and significant demand and this is the issue Kersley like all other places has significant demand and he didn't carry on uh, reading to tell us that the in the last uh, period that was counted uh, there were 75 expressions of interest for an available 13 one bed flats 75 expressions of interest so clearly Kersley may well be an established community but there is a, de a demonstrable demand uh, in the area for one bed flats uh, which is why 19 of the proposed units are one bed and five are two bed and, and I think this is the, um, the gist of the problem here. We, we can be guilty sometimes of applying our own personal uh, preferences uh, to housing types and thinking in terms of what would I as an individual um, like to live in. And that's fine. And I think it, it's fine that we apply these types of uh, standards, but it misses one crucial point and it misses the crucial point that there is significant demand for these smaller units from people who have completely different lifestyles uh, to perhaps most of us have. People who, who, who are single, people who are transient, people who, who want to use it as a stepping stone to move on. There's a, there's a massive demand for that all over, the, all over the town and we know there's a demand for it because of the issue of uh, HMOs or bed sits. Um, if we didn't have these types of one bedroom uh, flats and three bedroom, uh, two bedroom flats being made available, then where do people in Kersley go? Where do those 75 people who uh, expressed an interest in one bedroom flat, where did they go? I'll tell you where they go. They go into private rented bed sits because that's the only alternative. Now, if we don't like uh, these, these size one bed flats in our town, then we're going to have to get ready for a glut of bed sits. And as we know from the 
from the very uh, to the point question from Councillor Darvish, permitted development and no space standards. So Councillor Cunningham may well, and, and I sympathise with you, may well argue against this, but over the border in Farnworth, we've seen repeated um, um, permitted development um, changes for large Victorian houses into bedsits. Is this what we want as an alternative? Or do we want a reputable social housing manager um, to actually to actually run the place? Um, albeit smaller than perhaps what we would want, but please accept that there is a demand out there. I'm very happy to second the application, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Peel. Councillor Sherrington. I'm waiting for my red line. Have I not got a red line? We can hear you, Councillor Sherrington, if you wish to well, continue. You. Well, the red line is still on Councillor Peel, so I just wondered whether I'd been, whether he'd been moved out and I'd been moved in. It's a little bit like having a little flat, isn't it? Anyway, uh, can I just uh, say that um, I do have a problem with these sizes and it's all right saying, oh, well, they're better than bed sits. I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that it's a need I appreciate that it's a need in Kersley, but I do think that if we actually start saying that minimum standards don't matter, which is what's come across here, is saying minimum standards, they don't matter. It's, what matters is the fact that we have them rather than bedsits. Well, I'm sorry, bedsits are the lowest common denominator and quite simply, when people talk about minimum standards, that is the lowest common denominator. So we need to actually raise our standards, not actually drag them right down to these sort of sizes. And I think that just because, uh, you know, people say, oh, well, it will be social housing and it's built in its home. Well, the problem we have as planning is that if this is accepted by social housing, then when we get some other private developer coming along, they will say, well, you accepted that size for social housing and that's the size that we want. And then they'll say, oh, well, you know, you take no notice of minimum standards. So therefore we want them even less than that. So therefore what we're actually doing is making what is available to the public, to those people who want single accommodation, we are going to actually be offering them nothing better than the size of a bedsit eventually. And I don't accept that. I think that if something says it's minimum standards, it doesn't matter how you wrap it up, the minimum standards should be adhered to. And if that can't be adhered to, then therefore it needs to be taken away and have a jolly good look at it, which I think that with this, it's been sort of, oh, well, it doesn't really matter, you know, and all that, take no notice of them. Well, I'm sorry, you'll have to take notice of us because quite simply, I am going to support Anna Marie Waters, Councillor Waters. I will support her refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sherrington. The final speaker I've got listed at the moment is Councillor Hayes. Councillor Hayes. Thank you, Chair. I've still got the, not got the red line myself. Perhaps Councillor Sherrington is hanging on to it. Um, I, I think the point made about minimum standards are very valid, but I think I remember in the in the uh, introduction, Bolton hasn't actually accepted and adopted those standards in its policies. So possibly the first point to make is 
perhaps we should, uh, because I think we, we, we do need some minimum standards, particularly in view of what's coming through government planning legislation at the moment. We did defer, and I think it was very much worthwhile deferring, because we've got some improvement from a responsible applicant. Uh, I think it's important that we got the £3,000. I think it's important that we got the move away from the neighbouring property and a bit better in interface. And to some extent, the local lettings policy is an improvement as well. The problem we have, because it's allocated for housing land, almost certainly, I think, if Bolton at Home were to appeal, if we turn this down, they would almost certainly win their appeal. And they might choose to appeal on the basis of the original plan without the £3,000, without the improvement in, 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 in uh, interface between properties. So I think having tried it, we've got some improvement. Pity we didn't get more. There is definitely a need. And I join Councillor Peel in, 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 in saying that Councillor Sanders, I think, summed it up very, very well from the neighbouring ward. Uh, and I think I will support approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hayes. Councillor Darvesh. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I supported a deferment last time. My only issue I mentioned last time was the interface shortfall between the building and number 16 Holcomb Close. Now that has increased. That's very important because there's a big difference between living close to a large detached house compared to living close to a building that has 24 apartments in. So I'm happy. With the, um, with the move away from the building, so I'll be supporting this application. Thank you, Councillor Davesh. Our final speaker, therefore, Councillor Wright. Oh. Thank you. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Shelton and Councillor Waters on this. Uh, we are setting, well, we are setting a precedent for minimum standards in Bolton. If you want anywhere which is lower quality housing than any other town, you come to Bolton. And I'm one of those people that's actually lived in a one bedroomed social housing and i tell you they they're not nice places and they are soul destroying and uh as uh councillor peel said that uh you know we we may not live different types of lives than uh these people that live in social housing or house on multiple occupations uh we are the same people and we want to give these people a better chance in life and uh, by building minimum standard housing, which is gradually going to get lower and lower in quality and size, it's uh, it's a bad path that Bolton is going down, and I will be against this application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wright. It has been moved and seconded uh, approval of this application. Can I just check with Councillor Sanders that? Uh, Within that proposal, you accept the little lettings uh, proposal as discussed. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sanders. Yes, uh, Chair, that's perfectly fine. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Members are going to vote this for or against this application. It's for approval or against approval. Mrs. Ridge, can we take the vote, please? Yes, Chairman. So, Councillor Ayub. For. Councillor Connor. For. Councillor Darvish. For. Councillor Dean. For. Councillor Howarth. For. Councillor Hayes. For. Councillor Hornby. Against. Against. <laughs> Councillor Mistry. For. Sorry, Councillor Mistry. For. Councillor Newell. Four. Can you hear me? Yeah, was that Councillor Newall? No. Councillor, Councillor Mystery. Yeah, I've got yours, Councillor Mystery. Sorry. Councillor Newall? Four. Councillor Peel? 
Councillor Radcliffe. Aye. Councillor Sanders. Aye. Councillor Sherrington. Against. Councillor Walsh. Four. Councillor Waters. Against. Councillor Wright. Against. And that application is approved. Councillor Councillor Newall, Vicky. Yes, yeah, she's voted. She voted for. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Indeed, that application therefore is approved. Can I uh, thank members uh, for your attendance and declare this meeting closed? <laughs>